Hi guys, welcome back to another video on RabbitMQ. In the last video, we looked at a couple of alternative exchange types, as well as how we can use exchange to exchange routing in RabbitMQ. In this video, we're gonna use a Python implementation of exchange to exchange routing, using the headers exchange, and also using the consistent hashing exchange. As usual, all the code will be on GitHub with the link given in the description of the video. And if you're interested instead in a C-sharp version of this, please stick around for the next video where we will cover the exact same content, but in C-sharp. So let's start by looking at how we might achieve exchange to exchange routing in Python using RabbitMQ. So we'll start with the producer.py file. And as usual, this producer.py file is the same as the producer.py file that we saw in our very first tutorial using Python and RabbitMQ. And as usual, most of the code will remain the same. So anything around the connection and the channel creation is the same. But in this example, obviously we're doing exchange to exchange routing. So we want to declare two exchanges because we want one exchange to route a message to another exchange. So let's start in our producer by first declaring two exchanges. So we can do that using channel dot exchange declare. And let's call our exchange just first exchange. And for the exchange type, let's just say it's the exchange type direct exchange. So it's a direct exchange. And obviously we want to declare a second exchange. So let's just copy that down below. We'll change the exchange type from first exchange to second exchange or the exchange name rather. And instead of a direct exchange, let's make this one a fan out exchange. And then to bind the two exchanges together, we simply do something very similar that we do when binding queues together. We simply say channel dot exchange bind. So instead of queue bind, we say exchange bind and then we just give it the names of the exchanges we wanna to bind together. So we wanna bind the second exchange to the first exchange. So when the first exchange receives a message, it looks as its bindings, it's got a binding to the second exchange, so that's where it then routes the message to. So we always put where we want the message to go to first and where it's coming from second. So channel.exchange bind, second exchange, and first exchange. And we can change our message as well. So instead of saying, this is my first message, let's just say this message has gone through multiple exchanges. And when we're publishing it, we'll publish to the first exchange and we will leave a default routing key. And that's pretty much it for our producer.py. So as you can see here, we haven't explicitly bound any exchange to any queue. All we've done is bound the second exchange to the first exchange. So let's have a look in our consumer.py. And again, as before, this is the exact same code from our first tutorial. We don't have to do a huge amount here either, but what we do need to do is we need to declare this second exchange because the second exchange is what we will bind our queue in the consumer to. So remember, a consumer will always consume off a queue, never directly off an exchange. So we need to bind the second exchange to a queue that we create. So we can still use the letterbox queue if we want. And then we just want to bind the queue to the exchange using channel a queue bind this time instead of exchange bind. And the queue is letterbox. And the exchange is our second exchange here. And then we simply want to basic consume off the letterbox queue that we saw before. And that is basically it. We'll just need to import this Pika exchange type above as well. So now we've set it up so that in our producer, we'll send a message onto the first exchange. The first exchange will then forward that message onto the second exchange, which is a fan out exchange. And then the fan out exchange will push that onto our letterbox queue. We shall receive it here. So let's quickly open some terminal windows and give this a quick run to demonstrate what we've achieved. CD into our exchange to exchange example. And first we will run our consumer. So Python consumer.py. I'm gonna open a second terminal window here. And we'll run our producer. So Python producer.py. And we can see here we sent a message. This message has gone through multiple exchanges and that's been received on our consumer. So it has successfully gone through both exchanges and then onto the letterbox queue. If we just take a quick stop to look in the RabbitMQ management UI, 
and our exchanges tab, we can see that our first exchange as direct exchange and our second exchange as a fanout exchange have been created. And if we jump in and look at our first exchange and the bindings, we can see that it is in fact bound to the second exchange. And if we look at our second exchange, we can see that this exchange is again bound to the letterbox queue and also to the first exchange. So this exchange sits in between the first exchange and the letterbox queue. So next we'll look at how we set up a headers exchange using Python and Pika. So we'll close our terminal windows and let's just copy the consumer and the producer code from our exchange to exchange routing into our headers exchange. So consumer there and producer. And we'll start in our producer. So let's edit this producer.py file to support the use of the headers exchange. And obviously in this example, we won't need two exchanges. We'll just need the one exchange. And instead of calling it first exchange, let's just call it headers exchange. Remember, you can call the exchange anything you want here. It doesn't have to be headers exchange. And instead of an exchange type direct, we'll say exchange type headers. And we don't need to bind the exchanges together. Let's change our message type. So this message will be sent with headers and then when we're publishing the message to the headers exchange we want to publish with properties so we want to explicitly specify some properties and particularly the headers in the properties data structure so let's say properties equals pika basic properties and then inside basic properties headers and then we can say what the headers we want are. So we can say name Brian. So this will publish this message, it's this body with these basic properties and inside the basic properties we're setting the header name is equal to Brian. So then we can say sent message and close the connection as usual. So that's the only changes we'll need to make in our producer. So let's jump into our consumer and let's make some changes there to support it as well. So again, we don't need to declare the second exchange. We want the headers exchange instead. So we'll change the name of that. And instead of fan out, we'll declare it a headers exchange. We still want to declare a queue because we want the queue bound to the exchange as usual because we have to consume off a queue. But what we want to do is we want to bind the exchange to the queue using these binding arguments that we talked about in the conceptual overview. So we do that in the arguments here and we'll create our binding arguments as part of a variable. And what we'll do is we'll set first the X match. So this X match can either be any or all. If it's any, as long as one of the headers that is published on the message match one of the headers in these binding arguments, the message will be routed to the queue. And if it's all, all the headers that are defined here in the binding arguments will have to be matched by a message being published. So let's start just with any and we'll specify two headers. So we'll specify name as the same as we had in the producer and we'll specify another one called age and we'll give that a value of 53. So those are our binding arguments and what we're saying here is essentially as long as a message is published with either name Brian or age 53 as a header, then this queue binding will come into effect. And again, we just want to consume off the letterbox queue and we want to have the on message received callback and print start consuming. Perfect. Okay, so let's open some terminal windows and let's start using this headers exchange. So we'll say new terminal window, CD into our headers exchange example, and let's run our consumer first. So Python consumer.py. So it's saying no exchange, second exchange. So I must still have an issue here. Yet the binding here needs to be to the correct exchange. So the headers exchange. So let's run that again. We can see that our consumer has started correctly. So let's open a second exchange, CD into our headers project and run Python producer.py. And we can see here that the message we sent has been received successfully in the consumer. And that's because it is published with the header of name Brian and the consumer is expecting a match on any name Brian or age equals 53. 
if we change the binding arguments from x match any to x match all, and again open a terminal and run the consumer, and open a second terminal and run the producer. We can see that the message has been sent onto the exchange, but hasn't been consumed by the consumer. And this is because the producer is publishing a message with just the header name Brian, but the consumer is expecting a match on both name Brian and age. Looking again in the RabbitMQ management portal, if we look at our exchanges, we can see our headers exchange. And again, we can see that this exchange is bound to the letterbox queue with the arguments that we specified as the binding arguments. So the last thing we're gonna do in this video is use the consistent hashing exchange and set up the consistent hashing exchange. So the consistent hashing exchange is not installed by default when we install RabbitMQ. We need to enable it manually. So to do this, we can open up a command prompt and cd into where we installed RabbitMQ, which in my case is cdc slash program files. cd into RabbitMQ server and RabbitMQ server 3.9.8 in my case. And then we want to cd into the sbin folder and finally we want to run the command RabbitMQ plugins enable RabbitMQ consistent hash exchange and when we run that we will enable the consistent hashing exchange to be used with RabbitMQ. I spelt exchange wrong there B-E-S-E-H exchange so when I run it this time it should work fine and we can see that we've enabled the RabbitMQ consistent hash exchange to run. So let's start by copying the code from our headers exchange into our consistent hashing exchange example. So the consumer into the consumer and the producer into the producer. We'll start with our producer since it's quite simple in this case. Again, we want all the same connection code here. When we're declaring our exchange, instead of calling it headers exchange, we'll call it simple hashing. And we'll select the exchange type manually. So instead of using this, we want to use the consistent hashing exchange. What we do is we say x consistent hash. That should let us use the consistent hashing exchange. Let's get rid of this as well. And for our message, we'll just simply say hash me. And then we want to publish to the simple hashing exchange. And remember, the routing key is what we want to hash on. So we'll actually call this hash me the routing key. So we'll pass that in here and the message can be something different this is the core message and we no longer need to publish with any properties so we'll remove that so that's the basic setup from our producer side a simple declaration of the exchange and then publishing the message to that exchange with the routing key of what we want to use for the hashing like we discussed in the previous video the consumer is slightly more complex. So let's start by just removing some of the things that we don't need. So we won't need any of this headers stuff. And what we're gonna do in this example is we're gonna declare two queues and we're gonna bind both queues to the simple hashing exchange. So let's start by declaring the exchange. So we can declare that in the same way as before. We can remove this. And then we wanna declare two queues and bind both these queues to the exchange. So we'll call this queue letterbox one. And we'll bind letterbox one to the simple hashing exchange. And we wanna bind it with the routing key of one. So remember from our previous example, this routing key on the binding helps us determine which messages go to which queues by altering the hash space that is allocated to each binding. And then we'll have our basic consume here and on message callback, we'll go to on message received. So we'll actually add two of these up here, just a different callback for each queue. So on message one received, on message two received. And we'll just say queue one received new message. And this one will be for queue two. On message one received. And then we'll just copy this for queue two as well changing the values to a new queue called letterbox two 
still connected and bound to the simple hashing exchange. We can change the routing key if we want. We'll change the routing key to say a larger number, say four. So we would expect this queue to get much more times messages than this one. Letterbox two as well, and on message two received, and we can just leave that as start consuming. So for every message that is published onto this exchange, we would expect, I think, around a 20 to 25% chance of it going to this letterbox two queue, and the rest will go here. So basically, one in four messages should go to letterbox one, while three out of four should go to letterbox two. So let's start our producer and consumer and see what happens. So we'll open a new terminal, CD into our consistent hashing exchange, and we'll run our consumer. We have a error here, a non street character was supplied for the self dot routing key. These need to be supplied as strings. So let's change that easy peasy Run it again, and it started consuming. And in our second terminal, let's run our producer. And let's run our producer. So Python producer.py. And we sent this message and we can see that it's Q2 that has received it. So the Q that we'd expect to receive it has received it or the Q that's more likely to receive it has received it. We send the same message again. And you see if we send the same message with the same hash key, it's always received by the same queue. So we've sent about eight or nine different messages there, always received by queue two. If in our producer, we change the routing key. So instead of hash me, we say hash me with something else. And we sent that, it might get routed to a different exchange. So if we continue to vary this slightly each time, we'll eventually should get a message routed to queue one. Might take a little few more attempts. And we can see eventually we got a message that is routed to Q1. And if we send this message, like we said, with the same routing key, it will always be routed to, to Q1. But if we change it slightly, we add one more digit, it's likely it's gonna get routed to Q2 again. So that's how we use our consistent hash exchange in Python. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel.